Hi there, Russ Douglas 222 again. Uh, sorry it's been a, a 10 days or so since my last video. Um, been a bit busy and I've been off work for two weeks with a, a trapped nerve in my back. So uh, painkillers are helping. Um, anyway, I'm back and uh, I've got a kind of a fill-in video. I'm hopefully meeting Bruce uh, in the next day or two to film a uh, bit of a something new, a bit of a, um, an IR, general IR safety and information video. Because uh, Bruce is an authority on this stuff, and he's got he's got loads of kit to show off to to sort of demonstrate what he's talking about. So we'll do a bit of a Q and A session, hopefully in a day or two, and that, and I'll get that. I'm not going to wait a week. I'll get that as soon online as soon as I can. Meanwhile, we've got a bit of a a little bit of an extra video here for you. Um, some extras for the for IR in general, but in particular for the uh, the excellent pads. Um, so uh, right, without further ado. Right, so here we have um, my two PARD 008 LRFs, my pest control tools, and the scopes, day and night scopes, and these have got the adjustable iris. Now, the reason I've got these two on display is we have this shader 8 with the adjustable iris was made for the uh, power 008. So I've got a little bit of an electrical tape on here to make it a snug fit on the 008 LRF because there's about a millimeter of difference in the diameter of the, uh, the, the focus ring. This shader 8, newer one, and uh, it's a little bit tatty because I've already sort of uh, <laughs> I've already half broken it, but anyway, that's my clumsiness. Um, but this shader 8 has been made by Ash specifically for it to make a snug fit on the 008 LRF. So if I, if I pull that, that's a snug, snug fit. And basically, customers asked Ash initially to make these a looser fit on after their experience on the uh, PAR 008. So he made them a looser fit. And then loads of us were complaining that they're too loose, so he's now made them snug again, like this one. Um, but either way, if it if the one you've got, this one for example, was for a PAR 008. So I'm using it on my 008 LRF, and just a little bit of electrical tape on here makes it a snug enough fit that it's not going to be falling off anytime soon. Um, you get a shader 8 free with from customriflescopes.com. If you order a PAR 008 LRF, and he usually gives out free gifts as well. If you order, a, I think if you order a, a, just a PAR 008, you get one of these, which is more, more basic. It doesn't have the adjustable iris um, inside it, but it's simply a sunshade and it keeps the rain off. So uh, fair enough. It's, I'm not, I won't say no to free gifts. And if it's, uh, if it's bright sunlight, you might appreciate it. Right, here we have a uh, customriflescopes.com laser rangefinder. Excellent, excellent bit of kit. This one with a Picatinny bracket. And you'll see it's side mounted, um, but um, there's no right angled um, 3D printed bracket, which you'll have seen in one of the other videos. And this is because, see the display is the right way up for side mounting, but battery compartment and the aiming laser on the side, and the lasers, uh, the LRF lasers are on the side. So basically Bruce, Who's Phoenix on the Night Vision Forum has kindly rotated the rear display of this by 90 degrees, then rotated the whole thing the opposite way, screwed it directly onto the um, Picatinny mounting bracket. So my next outing, in a full cup, hopefully within a week or so, once my back's a bit better, I'll be mounting this on the side of the PAR 008 LRF to basically use both the LRF's laser rangefinder with its vertical splash, laser splash, and the uh, LEO32 laser rangefinder, this time with a horizontal splash. So I'll get the footage back to you as soon as I can on that, showing the difference between the horizontal and vertical laser splash, and uh, showing how that gets around obstacles, hopefully. And I, I personally, the reason Bruce has done this for me is I've asked him and it, um, I think a horizontal laser splash will be much better for us air gunners and pest controllers, air gun and rimfire pest control. I think it's going to be the bee's knees. 
and um, so we'll, we'll I'll get that to you as soon as I can so that will be side mounting the laser rangefinder purely for testing purposes because obviously the AA LRF has already got a laser rangefinder so it'll be side mounting and I'll basically be measuring the same distances um, one with a vertical splash one with a horizontal splash and bring you the differences and uh, let you all make up your own mind as to which you prefer unfortunately I can't see the AA LRF ever getting a, getting a horizontal splash because you can see the rectangular shape of the LRF module on the side uh, of the AA8 and uh, that lends itself to a vertical laser splash but um, I'll be bringing you the results of this little test as soon as possible okay next up some people have um, commented that and this is a regular failing of any night vision gear some people have commented that they get some uh, stink eye you know some blind in one eye having been using the night vision so they're looking through the uh, lenses here and uh, at night pitch darkness and uh, their eyes illuminated but only one eye and they pull the face away and we've all had it you're sort of blind in one eye for uh, a minute or two well one option is to play around with the menu the brightness settings and dim down the eyepiece display another option and this is via the second groove of the corrugation of this eyepiece because the double lrf the the rubber eyepiece is slightly stiffer than it was on the 008 um, so the other option is you buy a 37 mil lens from ebay and you pop the lens in this second ring and basically it just subdues the the, the light a bit and people you know you can use whatever filter you like i've sort of got the classic amber blue green uh, there's a rose tinted one and a darker red so i'm going to be trying these asap on my permissions in pitch darkness and um, we'll see which i prefer and we'll see if i can get some well i'm not sure if i'll be able to get some shots through the uh, through the uh, the pad with these in place but it's just to tell you about them really um, people were talking about these on the night vision forum and uh, i'll put the link to that below and the airgun forum on there's been quite a lot of par 008, 008 lrf threads and this is a general night vision thing anyway and i used to get the same thing last year with my uh, yukon photon rt night vision scope and, and i get the same thing to a degree with my uh, thermal spotter as well so these are hopefully i can see the green maybe the pink but the green and the red certainly being very helpful um so these will hopefully be uh be useful to you and i'll put the link as i say i'll put the link to these from ebay in the description below right next up we have with the double lrf having the rangefinder on the right hand side we still have one accessory rail and well i would say that generally um generally in most of us for anything out to sort of 200 meters 150 200 meters certainly fac rim, uh, air rifle and rimfire you know medium low to medium uh, rimfire ranges the excellent par 008 lrfs um and double eights uh on board ir illuminator the vcsel vertical cavity uh, laser uh, laser IR is very, very, um, you know, very powerful. Especially if you update it to ver version V1.25 firmware, then ver then le levels two and three are slightly improved. Um, obviously, you don't look in the lens, just as you don't look in the laser, because that's daft. You're pointing them downrange, and uh, you're looking through this end. But anyway, um, there's. For those who do want to really, really floodlight their, uh, their playing field of uh, prey or whatever, their woods or whatever, um, then you can add supplemental IR. And you've seen this. Uh, this is the uh, um, Clive Ward um, Black Sun Dark Engine from uh, the Night Vision store. Excellent bit of kit. And, uh, oh, by the way, my own tip for this is, uh, as well as rotating this main lens, uh, to focus narrow or wide and diffuse the beam also i mean, next time i'll use this in anger so to speak in in play outdoors i'll be actually rotating the, the entire body of the uh, lens 
of, of the torch rather to to make the um to make the resultant ir if you like downrange orthogonal square and not diamond shaped like this because that's how it looked when i filmed it last time it hadn't dawned on me because i hadn't used an ir illuminator for a long time so it hadn't dawned on me but i'll, I'll change it next time so um that's one hint uh, meanwhile uh, you saw in my, my last video, I think, this is the Burris Signature Z mount, and it's a, there's not a lot of play in it, but if you loosen it off a lot, then you get play in these screws, these, these torque screws. But there is, there is a little bit of play, and you can loosen these, pop it on the side here, on the Picatinny, um, tighten, tighten the top one. And then loosen the side ones, pivot this to suit your uh, uh, your target range, whatever that is, uh, until and then clamp clamp these two up tight, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Um, they are a little bit fiddly, and they are Torx head, as you can see, um, and there's a it's a very fiddly little Allen key. Um, so one alternative I showed you previously um, is you have. And this is using uh, tracer LED ray torch, torches for examples. Uh, these are visible light, but obviously just it's the same difference as long as your uh, IR torch has a 25 millimeter tube. So this is using uh, a clamp. This is a double Picatinny clamp from customriflescopes.com. And that allows you to clamp the torch on the side of the PAR 008 or 008 LRF. And You've got a much more of a pivot, I'm doing it one-handed, but much more of a pivot on this, this uh, excellent ball socket. And also you've got a finger-friendly, um, nice big thumb screw here that you can tighten this when you're in the field and you're not fiddling with Allen keys and you're aiming this fella. Now, I've now got another alternative because um, these were, when I wanted the signature Z, uh, when I wanted the adjustable clamp, uh, I bought this from Uttings, and I'll put again link below. But um, I, uh, what I was really after was this fella, and this is back in stock now. So this is the one I bought it a few days ago. I think they're about twenty-five quid. Um, they're a, they're a, they're built for a thirty mil uh, torch body, and you can see there's a packer here, which basically shims it down to, to take a twenty-five mil torch, and it's a the mount they've they've used. These are from customriflescopes.com and the mount you can use, they've used it. You can see it uh, includes a Picatinny top for uh, anything else you want to put on there, an IR laser or, or sorry, a laser or whatever. Right, so we have a finger friendly screw that then pops open, hinges open, and so that's a nice way, nice Allen, Allen key free way of uh, clamping your chosen IR torch and again this is the Black Sun Dark Engine 850 nanometers so this will be glowing red in the dark um, but they, that, that's that's a nice sort of Allen key free way of attaching your chosen IR torch to the clamp now the clamp in this case this is a clever bit of stuff this is it's slightly heavier as you can you can imagine slightly heavier than the Burris Signature Z and slightly heavier than the all plastic um, clamp of the tracer lead ray but this lets you precisely adjust things all right so we clamp this fella on the side right so i'll be as always, I'm always honest on all my reviews and videos. So I've just tightened this up and found that this particular torch body was ever so slightly slack within the uh, mount. So I've lined um, the inside of this mount with just one layer of black tape, black insulating tape on both sides. And uh, I've now tightened it up and it's pretty snug. There is a little bit of play you see that there there's a little bit of play in the mount itself but otherwise you can hopefully see now that when i turn so 
It's a quite coarse thread, so it doesn't take a lot of adjustment to move it quite a long way. You can see as I'm turning this vertical dial for left and right, it's really rotating this IR torch a fair bit. And then if I can swap hands, there's a dial here. So if I if I move back, you can see that that's angling upwards. If I move it the other way, angle it downwards. So this should allow me from now on to pretty precisely, uh, carefully align the IR illuminator downrange to match the reticle of the pod. Um, and uh, hopefully get the two matched up pretty simply without having to resort to any allen keys or anything okay as a wee uh, ad hoc supplement to this whole supplement video um wasn't happy yesterday with a little bit of slack in the adjustable mount the adjustable mount's great but i wasn't happy with a little bit of slack in the mounting of the um the ir torch within the bracket um or with this little tiny split headed nut it's got an early on it but it's very tiny i mean i've got big hands but this is tiny and to tighten that up you can see there's some um, bearing on that already from where i've had to use a tiny little pair of pliers so i went through my bits box and i found a pair of cheap these are very cheap off amazon you can see how cheaply finished they are Cheap bracket scope mounts I got yonks ago, and one of them, this one has, I'll see if I can find where I bought these, but it's probably years ago and the uh, listing's probably not valid anymore. Now that one is bigger, it's got a hex head, and it's got a capstan headed hole, capstan through hole. So that, and I've checked if the thread fits, so that is a perfect replacement to the little tiny fella. Oh, the other thing was, there was a bit of play in the dark engine on the, the mount itself. Um, the eccentric um, packer I, I showed you yesterday. I wasn't happy with that, so I tried one pair of these plastic 25 mil split mounts and this these packers are typical any cheap scope um accessory brackets picatinny brackets come with a pair of these and they basically fit inside a 30 mil scope ring scope mount rather to adapt it down to 25 mil now one of these again i wasn't happy that was still wobbling and then so i tried two and, and then i realized within this vocal or whatever it is um, quick release scope mount was a much bigger split ring so I'm now going to put that around the um, Black Sun dark engine from Clive Ward I'm going to fit that into the adjustable bracket I'm going to put this bigger nut on and show you how all, all that looks oh and one other improvement I uh, I took out, I wasn't happy with the uh, the little screw, the little bolt that holds this. Uh, again, that was a, a finger tight job. So I found a 20mm long uh, hex head bolt, which I've put in here. So I've now tightened this mount solidly onto the side of the, uh, the powered W8 LRF. You'll see if, there's a little bit of... Uh, give but that's the spring tension against which you adjust the the elevation um because of the way i've got this mounted okay so that's the larger 25 sorry 30 mil to 25 mil adapter fitted to the uh, ir lamp the clamp goes around the thread comes over the bolt comes over the top and get it roughly aligned and now the capstan headed bolt goes on. It's not a perfect fit because of the roundness of this mount, but there's certainly enough meat there. That's not going anywhere. And I can even finger tight. I can now get that very tight, happily. And I can always 
slip an allen key in here and tighten it further via that so there's now no wobble yeah there's no wobble now between the torch and this mount via that allen headed bolt there's no wobble between that bracket and the mount on the pad and the whole thing yeah the whole thing is uh, pretty solid so now i'm happy to recommend it to you so that's now solid and you can see how a small allen key goes uh, a typical allen key for scope mounts goes right through that capstan headed bolt to secure it nicely and uh, that's it so there's no no looseness in this all there is now is that's the spring tension of the adjustable mount itself so that's now perfect and all i need to do to take it off undo my uh, replacement allen bolt and uh, very happy with that so i'm going to pass this feedback back to ash so that he can uh, improve these uh, 25 mil adjustable uh, mounts he sells um right um this is a bit of a personal issue but Whenever, since the days when I'm old enough, since the days when widescreen TVs first came in, I'm one of those people who goes into a friend's house, looks at the TV and goes, oh, screen ratio is wrong. And it's because maybe perhaps they're watching an old BBC program that was filmed in four to three, which is only just rectangular, um, more square. And um, they're in a modern TV set and they press the button to fill the the image stretch the image to fill the screen so they are using the whole of their bling tv set and it results in people, everyone being a bit sort of fat everyone's stretched horizontally um and uh that's my only really main issue with the pads is we have a um I'll just check my crib sheet on the back of my hand we've got a 1980 by 1 1080 um pixel um sensor and the eyepiece is 800 by 600 which is four by three which is the old nearly square format the early you know original tv format before widescreens were brought in so and i've just done a test and if i look at around a circular object through the pad it looks circular in the eyepiece but video recordings when I've, if I'm on uh, one of the permissions, stables, and in the background there's a, um, uh, let's say a horse box, and I can see the uh, the wheels, and they're slightly oval to me, and I really spot this, I'm really obvious. Yeah, so I really really spot anytime i see something that's the wrong ratio too narrow or stretched too wide i spot it instantly my brain just ocd my brain will not let me not notice it um so every part video from 007 008 008 lrf including my own um everything looks slightly stretched um and i've looked at videos from friends like online other youtubers like um, norfolk squirrel um, and uh, even uh, robin foxer uh, these fox control vids well he uses he's been using his uh, 007 a little bit doing his squirrel pest control if you pause pause one of, sorry if you, if you pause one of robin's videos or one of um, the norfolk squirrels vi videos filmed with the 007 or the the, the 008 Um, and you measure the distance between the thick parts of the horizontal stadia and you measure the distance of the thin parts you know the vertical thick parts of the horizontal stadia and you compare them and it's stretched so and I've, I've calculated it that the 1980 by 1080 uh, rec recording resolution of the pad is currently um 16 by 9 um and it should really be four to three to make circular things circular 
Um, so that gives you a resolution of 1440 by 1080. So all my future, or hopefully all when I remember, all my future recordings of pest control done with the PAD 008 uh, LRF, um, I'm going to post process. It doesn't take, it only takes seconds if you've already got video editing software, as I have. Um, I'm going to post process the, the files to narrow them down to four to three ratio so everything's in correct proportion, horizontal, vertical, matching proportions. And then I'll do the editing and splice things in and so forth. So, what I'm going to include around right about here, here, wherever, is um, a 30 second clip of zeroing my FAC S510 at 50 meters. Um, recorded at, as it was recorded, which is 1980 by 1080 resolution. And the same thing after it's been ratio, as ratio has been stretched or narrowed back to uh, 1440 by 1080, i.e. 4 to 3. So nobody else has commented. I've not seen anyone else comment on this. So it's obviously my own OCD. Um, welcome to my world. Um, but uh, I want things to be one to one ratio. Uh, I've mentioned this to Ash and he said, oh, that's, he hasn't noticed it. Um, so he'd obviously not looked at the recordings in the way I've looked at them. Um, but my brain can't unsee this, this sort of uh, incorrect screen ratio. Um, so he's going to speak to Pard. I spoke to him a few days ago. He's going to speak to Pard about introducing an option. Perhaps it'll be an option in the menu recording 1980 by 1080 or 1440 by 1080, i.e. 16 to 9 or 4 to 3. Um, but in the meantime, until they introduce this option, which I'm sure they will do in a future firmware update, as well as new reticles, perhaps a ballistic rangefinder and so on, um, until they introduce this as a software or firmware option, I'm going to um, post-process my videos. So my, my future uh, pest control live footage, uh, be it rats, pigeons, rabbits, whatever, um, will be in 4 to 3 ratio. So <laughs> wheels on the lorries, will be circular and not oval. So I hope all that made sense and uh, you might not be bothered at all by the whole screen ratio thing. Uh, might be, I might be the only person on the planet who's remotely bothered. Um, so anyway, hope you uh, you like this. It's just a few a few hints and tips, some new kit, some alternatives, a way of using existing kit. Um, hope you like this and uh, I'll have more videos very soon um, and uh, hopefully including possibly even recording tomorrow with Bruce. Phoenix from the Night Vision Forum, and we're going to do a, a, a very thorough technical report on um, IR illuminators, uh, LED, laser, VCSEL, power levels, you know, guidelines, because there are no legal limits. There's, there's no law about it, just guidelines. Um, so we're going to do this video ASAP, and I'll get it online ASAP. And it might well be in the next couple of days. Uh, especially while I'm still off work with my back. But uh, hopefully the doctor will help me sort that tomorrow. Anyway, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Uh, like if you like it. If you don't, don't. But try and support. Subscribe to uh, see more. And I'll bring you more as soon as I can. There will be will be more gun reviews coming up. And uh, more bullpup particularly. Because that's my thing. Um, and uh, there will be more scope reviews. 
uh, and uh, any kits I can get my uh, greedy hands on. Um, okay, thanks for watching.